Um, how did it uh, come about that you're able to direct um, Jim Brown a football life? So, so that's a very that's a it's, it's a very interesting journey with with that particular with that particular film. Um, so the backstory is that at that point, and you know, like now, you know, 2021, I've known known Monique Brown, who's Jim's wife, and Jim for for over a decade now. But at the point of the film, I had known him for a few years, and Jim had appeared in a couple of projects that that I'd worked on, and you know, again. Just somebody, Jim and his wife. You know, we talk about mentors and, and direct mentors and indirect mentors. And it just seemed like every time I would talk to Jim, Jim and his wife, there'd just be something that I would take away, and I'd just be like, man, like they, like they are, they are, they are on it, and they, they're just, you know, uh, you know, wealth of uh, of knowledge in terms of in terms of navigating navigating the world. Um, so I'd known them for a couple of years, and um, and by this point, a football life. Was a was a series that NFL Films had produced, I think, for like three or four years at that point, um, and they had, they had interviewed the legends of the game, you know. But Jim Brown was a name that they that they had tried, and at that point, just hadn't had success on. And Jim is very, uh, you know, Jim is very particular in terms of the projects that he that he selects and that he takes. Um, and for whatever reason, Jim hadn't hadn't agreed to do a football life yet, so. Um, around the time of his 80th birthday, uh, I, I started uh, having conversations with with Monique about finding a way to celebrate Jim's 80th birthday um, on the NFL Network. Uh, so we were kicking around some ideas, um, and one of the ideas that came up, she had this great idea. She was she said, "What if we did some sort of roundtable where it's Jim with players that." That he that he respects and players that idolize him. Uh, so we end up doing a roundtable. It was Jim, it was Marcus Allen, it was Marshall Falk, it was Eric Dickerson, it was Franco Harris, Curtis Martin, and coming off of that, and it was it was amazing. And um, and <laughs> oh, those, are, those are those man, are those are not some big those names. <laughs> those are those are those are alphas in every sense of the word. But to <laughs> see the way that to see the way that they deferred. And their respect for Jim was amazing because they weren't alphas on that day. Like there was one alpha and it was Jim Brown. And um, so coming out of that, um, uh, Monique brought up the, the, the fact that, that films had reached out about doing Jim Brown football life um, again. And, um, and so we were talking and, and, and anyway, to make a long story short, um, I had previously done a film with NFL Films the year before. Um, it's called The Tale of Two Cities on the on the rivalry between the Cowboys and 49ers in the cities of Dallas and San Francisco over the course of 25 years. Um, so looking at the two teams, but also looking at what was happening in the cities. So I had just done a film with them. Uh, and um, anyway, just started having conversations. And one thing led to another. Um, so they felt comfortable with me coming on and... And, and directing uh, this particular this particular film and and working with films I actually worked with them you know uh, years uh, since then as well on on, on multiple projects uh, but working with them was great and the way that they have it set up man it's it's amazing because you have a partner so no matter what film you have like there's two people that 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 attack the film so my partner on this I got to give a shout out Angela Torma. Who uh, who's co-producer, editor? Uh, you know, she she was like the right hand person on that, and um, and we were able to tell tell a pretty amazing story, um, and and Jim was great, and you know, you think somebody eighty years old, you think that they would be moving at a, at a slower pace, wouldn't be as willing to travel, wouldn't be as willing to do long interviews, but Jim Jim. Had not slowed down then, and five years later, Jim is still not slowed down, and he's still all over the place, traveling everywhere. Uh, but it was amazing. I mean, and, and being able to spend a year with Jim um, and do you know long interviews with him, uh, but also talk to so many different people who who respected him and who were icons in their own right. You know, from from Jesse Jackson to to Harry Edwards to uh, you know, obviously great, great running backs like Larry Zonka and Emmitt Smith and, and, 
you know, you name it, uh, you know, Eric Dickerson, Marcus Allen, all these greats, and the and the, the level of respect that they had for him, it was really it was really eye opening um, and inspirational to see.